Hey guys, um, sorry I haven't been on lately, um, just in the process of some things that the Lord has laid on my heart, so it's being just all the obedience, but, um, I'm going to be brief this morning, but I just want to talk about trusting in Him, lean not on our understanding, um, it's time for us to use a little neology instead of our theology and get out of this swirly, twirly world of just like one of my, the messages I got out about are you covered under the blood or covered under the mud? Okay, so this morning is going to be about, and the reason why I titled it is because it's just, it was just a timing thing. Is coronavirus or Jesus? There is a storm coming, guys. I'm not trying to be all over the map with this because they all correlate to the same thing. But it's a decision time, guys. We're all into the politics, decision 2020, blah, blah, blah. The, the who's running, who's not. What they say one day, what they don't. What does Jesus say? What's the blood of the Lamb saying? Who's your source? Where are you getting this from? So I'm going to go back to the timing thing. I've got some scriptures first, I guess. Let's do that scriptures first and then I'll go to the timing thing. Um, the scriptures... Yesterday and this morning was a new one, but yesterday was, he said, these are, these are related, not necessarily related to, but this is, just, so I'm still studying on them. This coronavirus garbage, I'm going to call it what it is, honestly. I'm not mocking the people that have died from it or anything, but these are the scriptures. Because that's pretty serious stuff, I get it, I understand that. People have lost their lives over it, so I'm not, that's not, it's not funny. But these are the scriptures. Psalms 116, all of it, and then Revelations 12. And I'm, you know, and then this morning was, was Proverbs 27, which I just read. Kind of made some sense and kind of didn't, but. I'm learning this and what the Lord has me doing in obedience. <laughs> because it's just time, guys. The timing thing is, one of the messages that I put out recently was, the Lord laid on my heart was the 5 a.m. prayer. How important it was to start the day out with prayer. And he picked 5 a.m., the time of grace. I've been getting up at three to four or five for a year now. Been waking me up. Sometimes one or two. That's not great. That's not cool. I'm tired. It breaks up the whole day. I have to go back to sleep. Four or five was great because I could pray and, you know, be, still be fresh for the day. But I did what the Lord told me to do. Being obedient, but this 5 a.m. prayer, so yes, it's great. I'm not mocking, knocking their hearts. National day of prayer yesterday. One day of prayer isn't going to cut it, guys. With all that's going on, I'm going to seem like I'm all over the map, but you got to watch some of my other videos and start putting into context and listen to the, to the right preachers and teachers. But every day, start the day at 5. That's going to be what I'm going to put out there. Start the day at 5 a.m. Let's call that Let's call that our prayer, national time of prayer, not a day of prayer. Every day, 5 a.m. Let's do this, guys, because this is what the Lord's leading me to. Um, I've got some deadlines, timing. April 15th was one of them, and then I was like, wow, you know, I didn't even realize it, but I was like, well, that's Easter weekend. 
and then May May first is one of them. July, uh, he's leading me to a certain certain place in the country in a certain city and some things that I've got to do in July. And it's just kind of okay, God. I've been very busy um, with this helps ministry, starting this helps ministry. I can tell you why I've been on the on the Facebook and the internet much, and I really haven't even had a day off. Honestly, I've been just burning the candle at both ends. Well, this Sunday I took off, and it was raining, and now it's raining this whole week. So I've changed my whole everything I wanted to try to do or needed to try to do has got changed. But put it in the Lord's hands and prayed, and He gave me some new direction, some things that needed to get done too. It's like, okay, well, this is what I'll do. I'll do this. Instead of me thinking what I'm going to do, he changed changed the order. I'm okay with that. Um, some of the stuff that I'm doing, yes, I could probably, in some of my own ability, make it happen. And change things or rearrange things and some in the financial area but but the Lord has me on this on his wheel and I don't want to move and he's shaping and molding and he's teaching me some of the things he told me was he's gonna do like he did the ravens where he fed the prophets for his people his people not just the prophets for his people the manna from heaven the daily bread to stack it up Okay, so with all this mess that's going on with this coronavirus and everybody's panicking and running to and fro and um, it's just, he wants us to trust in him, guys, okay? Last week, I needed some paper towels. I had three rolls left. Well, it was before Friday. I went to the store and I was like, well, I'm already here, so all right. Oh, I got plenty now. And toilet paper, too. But I don't know why people are... I'm not, I haven't been cut the news off. I turned it off, actually. I canceled my new subscription for because I was paying $138 to DirecTV. I never watching much on there. I'm a little in the dark about this white toilet paper mess. But you know what, guys? One day... There is a storm coming. One day, the dollar bill is going to be that toilet paper, honestly. The stock market is kind of a facade. It really is. And I'm not, you know, I, I use it. I get it. You know. But he wants us to not treat. He told me he's going to do things that aren't going to require money. So I'll give you one example. Some of the things I'm doing in this helps ministry, I'm going to, you know, to house, feed, and clothe the sheep. But I'm checking out different things and just a lot going on. But every day in prayer, you know, what do you want me to do today, God? Well, a couple of the helps ministries in the food area, you know, feeding people, I've gone to to check out to see, well, two of them here in Dallas. Both of them are like, in, in you know, they're run by sweet people, nice, kind people, but they're like, we had 1,200 people come through yesterday, but I mean, for some reason, both of them said the same thing, and it's like, people come in, they sit down, or they wait in line, they fill out the forms, they go through, they get their food, and they're gone. I'm not going to be another soup kitchen, guys. None of that's going to work. If people don't have Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, the true gospel, instead we're all caught up in this surreal stuff. But so this was an example, okay? So I needed some help with something. And it was going to be a $250 bill, which isn't a lot, but I really wanted those resources for something else. But it was going to take up half the day. It was just kind of a little bit of stress. I'm like, man, God, you want me to do this? But... 
I'm doing it on a shoestring budget. So it's like, I really don't want to do that. But I prayed about it. I was like, okay, God. So I did the normal thing. I did the Google, looked up the internet. I'm going to a point here with this guy. It's about this corona garbage. So I look up the internet. Everything I found, you know, hundreds of dollars. It just, none of them were solutions to what I needed to get done. But remember I said just a few minutes ago that God, the Lord told me he was going to do things that weren't going to require money, that weren't going to take money. He's going to pull a Gideon moment in this last days. He's going to give us provision without the almighty dollar. Because that's an idol. That's one of the parts of the storm that's from the idols that are coming down. The dollar is coming down, guys. But unfortunately, and I'm not the doom and gloom guy, but so I'm praying and I said, well, Lord, I don't want to spend the $250 plus the time taking half pay plus the effort that I'm going to put into it. I just, I don't want to do that route. So I shelved it. A day or two later, I'm driving. I'm just driving normal, seemingly. I'm going to do something different, part of it, taking care of some stuff. Come to a stop sign. There's a big box truck right next to me with the answer and the solution. One phone call, set everything up. They came, took care of it, and it's going to be for, and going to be what I need to do because it's a continuation of this process in the future and it was free I set it up with a phone call they showed up on time early in the morning they did give me a time but they showed up pretty promptly right away 20 minutes later it was a done deal and they said they'll do it anytime I want So what I'm saying, guys, is the same thing with this, you know, because we're, I mean, I was listening to a preacher the other day with this corona, corona mass. And I'm going to get to the, the almighty dollar piece, too, and I'm going to end with that. But I listened to a preacher, and he was like, the message was fairly good until I really read into it, until I really got into the meat and potatoes of it, but it was like, you know, whose voice are you listening to? And you tone it down and it's a one one or two one scripture and <clears throat> good. Um get out of this fear mode and this panic mode. But then I'm like, okay, well you just closed your church for the week. Thousands of people can't come. And, but yet you still have a service and I see a handful of people and the first part of it is, you know, washing their hands, you know, clean, you know, it's like, practice what you preach kind of guys, you know, whose voice you really listen to. The mayor said, you know, don't gather and blah, 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 and da, da, da. So it's like, what about Jesus and the blood of the lamb? That's why I put that messages, those messages, like, are you covered under the blood or are you covered under the mud? Man, my doorposts are covered under the blood, guys. It's decision time. God, it's this little blip of the, yes, I get it. This might be breaking news, guys. 4,700, 4, I Googled it, I think, a couple days ago. I don't think, but, and have died from this coronavirus. Okay, yes, I get it. It's serious. I get it. People are dying from it. The hospitals are full of people dying from diseases. But how many babies have we let die through abortion? There's a lot of blood on our hands, guys. More die in one day. or killed in one day. Cast aside, thrown away. Like, like a dirty diaper. A life. Where's the outcry there? And yeah, I get it. That, that That's a whole other rabbit hole we can go down. There is some good organizations that are trying and some good preachers that are trying. So I'm not... There's just so much to it. But, the, you know, 
But our real focus needs to be on Jesus and the blood of the Lamb and who's your source and where are you getting your information from. It should be God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. Not your theology, but your neology. And that's what I'm telling you guys. And lastly, I'm going to end with, because I came across my news feed last night on my phone, and I need to just turn it off. But technology has just passed me by. So most of them are off, but this one keeps bleeping on my phone. I haven't even looked at the news yet or tried, did anything on a computer yet, but the Federal Reserve has slashed the interest rates to zero. A lot of knee-jerk reaction, guys. Yeah, we need to use our knees, the theology. Seek God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. So, there's a storm coming, guys. I haven't put the date on 8-11 and 9-11. 2020. The Lord told me to. I don't like that. I don't come because of the, one of the messages of the sensationalism, but it's all about the idols coming down. So many of them. Idol of entertainment, money, convenience. Churches are even becoming idols. Just all this stuff. It's becoming idols. Religion is becoming an idol. What about Jesus and the blood of the Lamb and the Holy Ghost and what he's telling you? do so anyhow um, I'm gonna end with that um, not time to panic guys I'm not gonna wait at these, one, one of these major retailers for the next box truck to come in with toilet paper I'm not gonna stack up stuff I'm gonna trust God that he's gonna meet my provision so um, even this right here I'm gonna end with this Bought what I thought was a decent computer for 100 bucks. I don't know much about computers. I needed one. It's a year, a year and a half ago. Ten months into it, or eight months into it, it kept blinking off and on, and I just never took it in. And then one day it just completely quit. Well, it was under warranty, so I took it in. Sent it off. They said the final result was after three different technicians was everything's destroyed. It wouldn't even come on. Motherboard, the everything. Okay, well, how much? What you know? We won't cover it under warranty. Okay, well, I was mad. You know, I was like, well, what do you? How much would it cost to fix it? Seven hundred and twenty dollars. Okay, I'll take ten of those deals. I paid four hundred for. That's a good deal. Not so getting to a point here of the provision trusting in God so like just send it back they said I did something to it which was bogus and I didn't I was mad but it was kind of my fault for buying you know and I need to buy another one but I'm just gonna kind of wait till some of this other stuff gets cleared up too um, so I'm using this. <clears throat> so I get it back. It wouldn't come on, guys. Nothing. The lights, nothing. I mean, it was, you know, three different technicians. Toast. <laughs> Motherboard, keyboard. <clears throat> Every board in there was destroyed. Lord, what do I do? That's what I'm saying. That's with the same with this coronavirus. Same with what we're facing as a country, as a nation, same with the, these storms that are coming. This coronavirus is just a blip on the radar, guys. Honestly, there's a storm coming. And it's decision time. Jesus or bust, kind of. Seriously. So, well, God, what do I do? Jesus, what do I do? A couple days. So plug it in. Wait a couple days. So I did. Three days. Turn it on, comes on, it comes on. Man, that's a cool testimony, guys. My computer, they, you know, prayed about it for those three days and it came on. Worked for about a week and I was like about to testify because my wife and I minister at a homeless shelter every Sunday night and I was about to testify that Sunday about my computer and it bleeped out again. Well, long story short, it was a two month process bringing about it, dude. I'm using it right now, guys. 
I have to do disc defragmenter and disc cleanup every morning a lot, all the time, it seems like. And it's because the processor is too slow. And they did buy a cheap computer. You need to put, put a couple more hundred dollars into it, probably, is what people are telling me. But um, So, it's, I mean, I'm going to buy another one, but for right now, this works, and I'm on it. And But what I'm saying is that was another piece of provision. I didn't have to pay for anything. I didn't have to use any, any resources but prayer. So, that's why I'm saying I'm on this wheel. Yes, I could probably make some of this stuff happen quicker in the obedience things that Wade told me to do but I told my wife I was like I feel like God's shaping and molding me in this and teaching me to get some deeper trust in him and not in the little bit of resource I don't have a lot of resources but you know I could use some of them and make some things happen easier and convenient but I'm not going to because I don't feel led to I'm like man God I want to finish this course because you're showing me some pretty cool stuff in this you're teaching me to just trust in you and I will end with this I get it I'm not you know <clears throat> being unreal Money's just a tool, guys. I'm going to leave this morning at 7, and if I need gas, i got to go use my show card. And, you know, I go to the, it, it, you know, I needed to say approved or not seeing the cashier or whatever. And so i got to pay my bill. Or I can't use my card. What if the power goes off? And then, you know, so it's just a tool, though, guys. And I'll end with this. I gotta do some yard work and I gotta dig, dig some stuff up. Well, I'm gonna use a shovel. I'm not gonna use my cordless drill with my door handle on the front door broke. And got one from Amazon and it just didn't work, so. Send it back and gonna, you know, look around and get a you know, better one. Kind of want. But I'm not gonna use my cordless drill. I'm not gonna take the shovel and go try to fix my door handle. I'm not gonna take that cordless drill and go try to dig this hole. Well, it's the right tool, the right time, but 5 a.m. prayer, very important. It's not just a national day of prayer that, you know, good, not going to cut it. One day. It needs to be every day, guys, and I'm telling you, it's 5 a.m. There's this time period in the space when the Lord's telling me to tell his people, time to pray, time to weep for this country between the porch and the altar because there's a storm coming guys it's raining right now in diamond dallas it's rain gonna rain all week it's a prelude it's a kind of a natural sign but the things that are coming to this country it's going to be decision time are you going to trust him or not still listen to all this other gospel that people are portraying and there's some really good stuff out there there's some really garbage out there too, guys. That's why it's called the spirit of discernment, but the reality of it, the bigger reality of it is the Holy Ghost, because he's the lead guide directly to all truths. So when you're being led by the Holy Ghost, it's really, really in your heart. Are you really letting him in? Are you really following God's plan, which was Jesus? That's the whole beauty of the cross. We all can enter in, because that's another idol better than mentality which is real prevalent in the world the church the everywhere you go even in family structures and guys are you reading your bible just go to matthew 20. It'll kind of clarify a lot of that real quick i've been at churches and service talking to somebody homeless that goes there. I got a big deeper message from them than I did coming across the pulpit. All right. And sometimes I've gotten some really deep messages coming across the pulpit too. So I'm not, you know, not going down that rabbit hole either. What I'm saying is God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, 
his word. And you're going to get it in your in your neology, in your secret place, in your prayer. Instead of closing all these church doors, and there should be a 24-7 prayer meeting. We shouldn't be scared to gather together. Fearful of, you know, I'm going to end with this, okay? So it's like, this is just, this is kind of where the sheer stupidity comes in, honestly, guys. It's like, everybody's like, gather toilet paper, do this, do that. Don't gather together. Public gatherings or whatever. I really haven't been paying attention to the, to the news. So I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants on this one. But one of them was don't gather together in big crowds. So that's why these pit schools are closing, churches are closing. Well, okay. But yet... I think it was Friday, I went to went to one of these big box retailers because I needed to pick some stuff up. Well, aisles were wiped out, shelves were wiped out. There's a thousand people in there, 300 people in line. Big crowd. Jason toilet paper. Okay, well, makes a lot of sense to me. Don't gather in big crowds, but yet go panic and chase down Toilet paper, well, how long is it going to last you? Ten days, two weeks, five days, a month? What are you going to do when it runs out? I know what I'm going to do. What does this cup say? Trust in the Lord. Pro Proverbs 3, 4, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways, and He'll direct your paths. Why well, do you acknowledge Him? How do you seek him? How do you trust him? Let's start at five in the morning, guys. With your wife, without your wife. With your husband, without your husband. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Whatever, however it works. But start. Let's, let's spread that word. 5 a.m. Prayer. Pray for this nation. Pray for this country. Pray for your family. Pray for your, you know, the blood of the lamb on your doorpost. Pray, pray, pray. Seek his face but it's on an individual basis. So we, when we come together in a corporate gathering, we have something, we have something of some substance. Not just a bunch of hogwash and theology and just a lot of stuff I'm hearing from different ministries or, you know, I, 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 you know, it's like, I think this, I think that. I don't, I don't care what you think. And you shouldn't care what I think either. I'm not telling you that. I'm not trying to get a bunch of followers. I'm not trying to run for president or anything. I'm not. I'm telling you who's your source. God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and his word. I'm directing you to him. That's the whole beauty of it, the cross. That's the whole reason. It's got to be God's plan, not your plan. So anyhow, love you guys. Um, this... Yes, there's a seriousness to this coronavirus mess. But the real crux of the matter is Jesus. So unless you get him, get it right with, with God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and the Word, all that other stuff is irrelevant. It really is. What you have, don't have. Have enough toilet paper, don't have enough mints. You know, it's almost stupidity, guys, honestly. So, there is a storm coming. Just check out some, you know, blog with me. You can email me at youngstrom. No, you can email me at jesusisaliveinamerica at gmail.com. Blog with us. Comment. Uh, let's hear from you guys, okay? We love you guys. Um, don't get caught up in this worldly mess. Covered under the mud or the blood the mud and sin of this world that you can't even see your mind clouded with this news media cycle of doom and gloom and a disease that's going to run rampant and the government's going to quarantine us all. What are they going to do? Is the Pentagon going to declare a mountain? You know, uh, what do they call it? Where the military takes over the 
whatever, I forget, you know, my mind's kind of clouded. It's early in the morning, guys. So, you know what I'm saying. But they're going to stand there with a gun at my head and say I have to stay in the house. Anyhow, that's a whole other soapbox. Love you guys. Uh, talk to you soon. Trust in the Lord with all your heart.